It is finally the weekend, ladies and gentlemen, and it's time to deep dive into week two DraftKings plays, bringing you the value, the stats, and the guys you need to pay up for. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Chef D, and I'm here to give you the winning ingredients for your week two NFL DraftKings slate. Yes, we are back at it again. But before I deep dive into this very, very intriguing slate, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MetsNetJetsD. Don't forget about the TikTok at Chef underscore D91. And don't forget about the Patreon if you want more DFS betting and fantasy football help. All of those links will be provided down below. Now, before I give you the individual plays, I want to focus in on the games that are going to be stackable, okay? Always, I always go over that stackable games that you can have pieces from both, five, both sides. Obviously, you could do that in each and every game, but we want environments that are going to be uh, more back and forth and have potential to have high scoring outcomes. All right, so the first game we're going to look into that's going to be super, super juicy uh, will be this Arizona Cardinals versus the Las Vegas Raiders. We saw what the um, Chiefs did to the Arizona Cardinals defense. This team is has so much chaos. They have no direction. And Patrick Mahomes was able to destroy them uh, through the pass game. And obviously, the, the Raiders have so many options. So we have a game environment where we got, uh, well, one poor defense in Arizona Cardinals. Raiders, they're subpar. They have somewhat of a pass rush, but the corners in the back are questionable. So this is going to you know, lead to a high scoring environment, a lot of passing in this game. So we have the highest priced quarterback, obviously, in Kyler Murray on the whole entire slate. He's someone that we're going to look at. Obviously, if you if you have no problem paying up there, then you definitely need to find maybe a cheaper option to pair him with or a cheaper option on the other side on that Raiders to pair him with. So you can go either with Carr or Kyler Murray to begin your game stacks in this particular matchup. Guys, we want to connect um, with Kyler and Derek Carr in this game. We have a lot of injury news on the Arizona side. So for Arizona, no Hopkins, as you can see, no Rondell Moore, and there's not going to be um, no Andy Isabella. So pretty much the Arizona side is going to be focused in on Marquise Brown, uh, the wide receiver right here, who he, who he got a touchdown last week. Four for 43 on six targets and a TD. He's going to be the number one in this offense. A.J. Green becomes the number two. I don't think I'm leaning towards him. If I'm choosing a second wide receiver or second pass catch catching option, it's going to be Greg Dortch right here who um, has nice capabilities in the slot. He's been out playing Rondell Moore in camp. And as you can see, he was utilized in week one. And Rondell Moore is out this week. So seven receptions, nine targets, 63 yards. We're seeing a nice volume there. And this is a great punt play to have. And the other option on Arizona that we can look towards is going to be veteran Zach Ertz. This is going to be a nice, cheaper option for you at the tight end position. I don't know why he bleached his hair. He looks absolutely horrible. But at 4,500, He's going to get a lot of targets as well. He was able to come through with a touchdown. And now with a more condensed uh, tree here between uh, Marquise Brown, Ertz, and Greg Dortch, these are going to be the three guys that you need to focus in on on these Cardinals Raiders stack. So those are the three guys we're going to look at on that side. On the Las Vegas Raiders side, we're going to obviously focus on the big catalyst. We got Darren Waller here. He should have a great uh, matchup with Isaiah Simmons, who's just been struggling year after year. They're, I don't know why they went after a guy in at such high draft capital that does not have a position. All right. I get it. You can only do that as a team if you have if, if you can afford it on the defensive side. If you're solidified everywhere else, then, yeah, throw a dart on a dude that can play multiple positions. But you needed a cornerstone and Simmons is not the guy. All right. So we love Waller in his one on one matchup. Obviously, we love Devonta Adams. He is not missing a beat coming over to the Raiders. All right. All that scare and, and all that that doesn't 
That doesn't matter. They played together in college, man. Y'all need to like realize these college connections, these shower narratives from back in the day, they have a huge history, man. How do you think they grew up and learned from each other? Like they, they're like this. They're like this, man. They're like this. And as you can see, 10 receptions, 17 targets, 141 yards, and 20 D. It's the same stuff that he did with Aaron Rodgers, but only with his best friend. So Adams definitely is going to be a must play at 8,600. Love Adams. And Renfro was a sneakier play at 5,500. Do not forget about him. He had six um, targets, so he got looks, okay? He got looks, and he's going to get open easy. As you saw, Juju had a very good game against the Cardinals. Hunter Renfro is going to be running those similar routes in the middle, crossing patterns. Um, so Renfro is going to be a nice, sneaky play this week as well. Those are the guys you're going to focus on. If we're looking at running game, maybe you can go to James Conner. I'm not really leaning to anyone on the Raiders side. Josh Jacobs has a solid matchup, but he needs the work in the red zone. Okay, he needs that work in the red zone. All right, so let's go over to the next stack we're going to focus in on, and that will be the Washington versus Detroit game here, okay? Both of these teams showed up last week. Um, Detroit put up a big fight against the Philadelphia Eagles, and Washington had a solid game. Carson Wentz stepped up um, against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now they're going up against each other. Detroit tries so hard defensively, but they have a lack of talent. Um... Obviously, Love Hutchinson, Akuda is stepping up a little bit more, but everywhere else, it's not, it's not great across the board. So there's going to be openings for uh, both of these offenses. Okay, now Carson Wentz, solid play, someone we can rely on. He is up and down, but he does have upside. Week one, 32 fantasy points, so that is a positive. So we can look towards him. Jared Goff on the other side. I'm not sure if he can reach that 20 point fantasy point production I, I might more want to lean to uh, Carson Wentz but Jared Goff has the weapons all right he has the weapons uh in this game in week one against Philadelphia they lean more on the run it was more effective so Jared Goff might need to throw more touchdowns this week so that's going to be intriguing to see if you want to go with Jared Goff's um golf stacks I have no problem with that because I think this is going to be a high scoring um game so Jared Goff Wentz are going to be thumbs up if you want to do the stack running back wise straight juiciness here deandre swift at 7,000. love him um he's fine he practiced friday you don't got to worry about that q tag and antonio gibson all right this guy is the number one all right look at the production 14 attempts 58 yards seven receptions on eight targets 72 yards seven for 72 and it wasn't just coming out the backfield there was actually he was actually running real routes um, coming out that backfield, scheming for Antonio Gibson to get him open in space. It wasn't just it's just simple little uh, come out route or he blocks and then he'll peel off. No, Antonio Gibson was running actual scheme routes. Great job from the Washington uh, Commanders um, offensive coordinator to get this man open in space and create mismatches. All right, Antonio Gibson is going to be a stud, all right? Even when Brian Robinson comes back, and I don't know how long that is. I mean, we've seen him on the side. It could take longer than four weeks. So Antonio Gibson is going to be someone that is going to be a focal point. Just do not fumble the football, okay? Can play consistent, all right? On the wide, uh, wide receiver sides, we have Terry McLaurin. We have Amon St. Brown. I think Amon Ra St. Brown is just a lock. He is the number one target for Jared Goff, similar to what Jared Goff did with Cooper Cup. Um, he linked in on him. So Amon Ra St. Brown is has a nice connection with Jared Goff. And this man is just, it's taking it to a whole nother level. 20 fantasy points we saw last week in a great matchup now against Washington. I love him there. Terry McLaurin. Might have a little bit of a tough matchup with Jeff Okudo, but this is still an elite top tier talent. I'm going to take the talent over Jeff Okudo, okay, please. So, Jared, Terry McLaurin, uh, Amon Ross St. Brown are great options. Curtis Samuel has been uh, utilized highly in this offense. Ron Rivera and Curtis Samuel have the connection from the Carolina Panthers. Um, so, look at this usage 11 targets, 8 receptions, 55 yards, and a touchdown. And he's getting work in the rushing game. All right, so that's a positive there. I have no problem going with him in stacks. 
Uh, we continue to go down with the wide receivers for this particular game. We got Jahan Dotson. All right, Jahan Dotson. Can he recreate that two touchdown gain? I doubt that. Uh, maybe one touchdown. Maybe we get more of receptions and yards. But I don't see him getting two touchdowns in this game. But he's someone to look at if you need a punt play around that 4,200 range and below. If we're looking for a second wide receiver, then we're going to go with DJ Shark. Yeah, he saw a nice amount of targets, four receptions on eight targets, 52 yards, and a touchdown. This is going to be their deep guy. Amara St. Brown in the middle, DJ Shark a little bit deeper. And this man is a guy that had over a thousand yards with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Shark is a nice, sleek, sneaky play for the Detroit Lions at 5,100. All right. So that's the game you want to, second game you want to focus on is Washington and Detroit. If we're looking at tight ends, I want to stay clear um, of this here. Hawkinson, if you want to, but I don't like the tight ends in this game. All right. So the third game, last but not least, game we need to stack in on will be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the New Orleans Saints, okay? Tom Brady's fantasy point production on the road against the Saints is high. It is very, very high. We can do that real quick right now. We can go to Stat Muse. I can see this might This is probably going to be a very long video. We're going to Stat Muse right now. Tom Brady, DKP, which is DraftKings points, if you want want me to explain to you by game log versus saints okay use stat muse that muse is very very helpful okay so as you can look on the left these are the home games okay against the saints 6.8 and 5.4 the road games against the saints is 31.2 and 22.5 since he's been with the tampa bay buccaneers as you can see in the chart below here we have the road games right there. So at New Orleans, 31.2, and then at New Orleans, 22.5. So I have no problem playing Tom Brady uh, this week, okay? A lot of people are going to look at all oh, the Saints have uh, been very competitive against Tampa Bay the last five times they matched up, and Tom Brady struggled. Look deeper in the numbers, guys. Look deeper into the numbers. So I love Tom Brady at 6,400. Obviously, I have no problem going with Jameis. We had Tom Brady only have 11 fantasy points. He's going to bounce back um, in week two. Jameson Winston is going to play, and he's a nice cheap guy to have at 5,500 because if they're down, they will throw the ball. They're coming out in three wide receiver sets. They have great wide receivers in Landry. Michael Thomas looks back. And Chris Alave, not to mention they have um, Tatum, I mean Tatum, Taysom Hill as their QB slash tight end. Very, very effective there. Winston will not give up, right? He's going to put up points. Uh, so Winston is a nice uh, play at QB as well if you're looking down at the cheaper options. Running back, I want to stay clear of Kamara. Um, he's having issues right now with his ribs. Highly questionable. Uh, limited, per, limited participant in Friday's practice. Um, so there's doubt that he could play. If he is out, then we're going to Mark Ingram. It's not a great play because it's Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense, but he becomes an option if Alvin Kamara is out. All right. On the Tampa Bay Buccaneers side, Fournette is getting a lot of usage. All right. So we have no problem going here. He's getting usage in the running game. As you saw, 21 carries, 127 yards. Um, and in the receiving work, two receptions. OK, if he doesn't play. This is going to be an easy smash for Rashad White at 4,500. We saw him get some carries in week one, six for 14. He also got two catches for seven yards as well. So those are going to be the guys we look at um, in case of injury. I'm staying away from the running backs in that game. Wide receivers, we can look at all these guys. All right. No Chris Godwin uh, for the 10 Bay Buccaneers. So there's going to be a key focus on Mike Evans. And if we're looking at a cheaper option, I love Julio Jones to pair with Tom Brady. All right. He's he had he ran some very nice routes in week one at three receptions, five targets, 69 yards and even ran some ran the ball twice. I don't I don't know how they use they're They're bringing old school Julio Jones back. They're using him like he's Claypool. So love Julio Jones. Mike Evans is going to be a threat in the red zone each and every time. 
five receptions, 71 yards, and a touchdown in week one. So Mike Evans, love Julio Jones. Those are the guys we're going to focus on on this particular team in Tampa Bay. If you want to go to Russell Gage, you can. Um, hopefully we get a better performance out from him. Uh, even with now with Chris Godwin fully out, we'll probably see more Russell Gage in that slot. All right. So on the other side, Michael Thomas, he could be fully back, man. He could be fully back. I was impressed to see uh, five receptions, eight targets, 57 yards and two TDs. I have no problem going with him. We can also go with Chris Ol uh, no, with Jarvis Landry, who saw a big A dot. Uh, he averaged 16 yards per catch. So that was a very, very impressive seven receptions, nine targets, 114 yards. I love what I've seen out of Jarvis Landry. We can go to him. And if you need a punt play wide receiver on the Saints, that's going to be Chris Olave at 4,500. All right. So those are going to be the stacks for week two. The games you need to focus on, those three games, I really, really like. All right, so let's go down to some individual plays, all right? Maybe we can find some value. Looking at the QB position, Lamar Jackson gets a revenge narrative against the Miami Dolphins. They blitzed them uh, pretty much last year. Um, I think he's going to bounce back in this performance. He's coming for everybody, all right? He's proving that he wants this uh, big payday, all right? He took. He said no to the money, and now he's going to prove himself. Um, and I think he can do that against the Miami Dolphins in week two in the Ravens home opener. That's going to be a factor. I like Lamar Jackson, who people are going to be might, might go away from because of the matchup. But I like him there at his price. Um, continue to go down. Russell Wilson, this is a blowout narrative. Uh, we might see more work from Javante Williams. Um, I think he can get there. But, yeah, I think he can get there. They're going to let Russ cook. And I like him as a stack option as well. But this could be lopsided. It could be Russell Wilson getting up quick. And then they're going to ice the game with Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon. Okay. Uh, so I have no problem going there. Joe Burrow, I think that's another blowout narrative against Dallas. Um, I might lean more to Joe Mixon in that game. Okay. Tom Brady, I spoke about Stafford. This is another blowout narrative. Um, he might want to get things right. All right. This could be a bounce back spy. As you saw, three interceptions. People are not going to think about him. This could be a great stack option. Stafford, Cooper Cup, Allen Robinson. Or you can do Stafford and Allen Robinson um, and they have a nice one-two punch there. I like Stafford at that price at 6300 Derek Carr, love him there. I already spoke about him. A bounce back performance will be Trey Lance going up against Seattle, all right? Do not pay attention to that game in week one, all right? That was a, literally a storm, a monsoon. You can't, those are not playing conditions. Those are not normal playing conditions, okay? That was super, super rare. They were slipping and sliding. They were, they thought it was a water park, that game between the Chicago Bears and the San Francisco 49ers. We're going to see how he plays in sunny San Francisco against the poor Seattle defense. This could be a great spot. This is one of my favorite value plays here. Trey Lance at 5,700. Everyone's been, you know, oh my God, Trey Lance sucks. Why did they didn't just play Jimmy G? Shut up. Shut up. All right. Please shut up. All right. Let's see him play in regular weather. Okay. So Trey Lance is going to be one of my top plays at quarterback and his value will continue to go down. Mariota can be a punt play. They're going to be down. He's going to be forced to throw. He's going to be forced to use his legs. All right. There's upside to these running quarterbacks. As you can see, 12 rushes, 72 yards and a touchdown from Marcus Mariota. He's going to do a whole lot of that against the Rams. All right. He can be scrambling for his whole entire life. Aaron Donald is going to come from him. But that is a sneaky option. Um, continue to go down. Let me go to my last punt play. And that is Joe Flacco. I gave you him last week. And what did Joe Flacco do? I didn't say it had to be pretty, but he got you there. His salary last week was 4,800. And I literally said, you can go back to the video. If he gets you 18 to 20 points, he is paying off his salary. And look what he did. 18.3 points. He got you there over 300 yards passing, one TD. Joe Flacco is a punt play. 
Okay, he is a punt play. They are going to continually throw the ball if they're down. And a lot of people think they're going to lose and they're going to be down against the Browns. So it's going to be the similar narrative here um, going up against a little bit of a worse defense. Baltimore, obviously, I think they have a better defense than the Cleveland Browns. So Joe Flacco could be a little, a very, very cheap punt. Let's go over to the running backs. And we got some sneaky plays here. Obviously, we got the top here with Taylor, CMC, and Barkley, and Mixon. I like all four of those guys. Taylor, McCaffrey, Barkley, Mixon. Definitely love those guys. Barkley will throw in here because he's getting such a high usage. All right? Such a high usage. He's getting all the snaps. 18 carries, 164 yards, six receptions on seven targets. All right? This man is back. He is fully back. So definitely have to note him. DeAndre Swift. I love him. He's going to play. I already spoke about him in the stacks. Let's continue to go down. Um, Javante Williams. We finally get a taste of Javante Williams on a Sunday. He had a primetime game uh, last week, and now we get Javante Williams here on a Sunday. I think he's going to have a ball against the Houston Texans, all right? So I'm loving him at 6,500. We can definitely get creative with cheaper running backs here. You don't have to pay up. If we're paying up our wide receiver and quarterback, which you should focus on more. All right. It's more important that you have um, either a dual threat quarterback or an upper tier quarterback that's going to put up yards and points. Quarterback is a very, very key position. You can find gems at running back. All right. You can find gems at running back. So Saquon Barkley, Javante Williams, our likes. We continue to go down. I spoke about Antonio Gibson already. He has PPR upside on DraftKings. Uh, Cordero Patterson is going to get a lot of opportunity with Damian Williams out. He is the number one guy, and he saw a very high usage against the Saints. 22 carries, 120 yards, a touchdown. He had five targets and three receptions. All right, He's getting work on both sides of the ball, so love Cordero Patterson. Don't care for Zeke. Don't care for Jacobs, Pollard. No. Here's another gem right here. Darrell Henderson right here. This man is the number one running back for the Los Angeles Rams in a blowout narrative. So we can see the Rams get up big. They're going to ice the game. They're going to use their big body back in Darrell Henderson. He's getting all the snaps here. Not only did he see uh, receive 13 carries, he also got five reception on, on five targets. All right. He's putting out the hustle and the effort out playing clearly. Um, Cam Akers, who has that Achilles injury, all right? He's not looking like nowhere near his old self. Henderson is going to be a smash this week. Love him at 5,700. Let me make sure I, I throw him in there. We'll take Barkley out and we'll throw Henderson in there. So you guys remember, remember, technically I'm building you a lineup. I'm building you a lineup technically, okay? Let's continue to go down. I will go back to the well on Travis Etienne. Those touchdown opportunities that James Robinson got, it was because ETN dropped the ball on a couple of occasions. So this is a guy really playing his first uh, full season because he missed all of last year. ETN is going to get acclimated. He's getting high usage in key parts, in two minute drills, in red zone. That's where they're using ETN in key high uh, point situations. So ETN is going to be uh, a smash for this week. I have no problem going back to him. Do not fall trap into that James Robinson two touchdown. Okay. I, I'm happy he did it, but that's not going to be the norm. All right. Uh, let's see if we find some cheaper options down here. And no key one here, my sneaky play, my sneaky punt play at running back this week is going to be Naeem Hines. Why? Because this Indiana, Indianapolis Colts team is riddled with wide receiver um, injuries. Okay. So right now, they're pretty much down to Ashton Doolin and Paris Campbell, all right? Michael Pittman is highly, highly questionable. Wait on news for him. If he's out, if he's out, then we're going heavy on Naeem Hines. They're going to use him heavily in that passing game. Um, the organization has talked about how much they're going to use Naeem Hines this year. And we saw it in week one. Not only did he see three carries, he also saw six receptions on six targets. For 50 yards. And another key component here is Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan is immobile and he will check that ball down in a heartbeat. Okay? It does not matter. He's going to check that ball. If he sees someone come around that corner, he is throwing it away. He is not going anywhere. All right? So do not have to worry about a running quarterback. 
Naeem Hines becomes a very solid play with Michael Pittman out. So definitely watch that news. If Michael Pittman's out, we're going to be higher on Naeem Hines. But I love him this week. All right. At 5,300. That could be a super sneaky play. J.K. Dobbins, maybe if we get a full uh, full go because we know the Ravens run that ball um, at a high clip if you want to go there. And then uh, some other options down here. Chase Edmonds, uh, he's, he's been seeing a number one running back work. And he's getting receiving work. So it wasn't very good in the rushing game. Only 2.1 yards per carry. But we saw him get four receptions on four targets. So that's a positive. And then we have Jeff Wilson down below in a game that should be a blowout. All right. No Elijah Mitchell. Jeff Wilson at 5,100. He's going to be highly owned because he is the number one running back now. But don't forget, he's also splitting carries with Debo Samuel, who we like. We like Debo Samuel this week going up against Seattle because they're using both of these guys. They're using Jeff Wilson, they're using Debo, and they're using Trey Lance. All of those guys will be splitting carries. All right, so Jeff Wilson is a like, but he is not getting all, all, all the work. All right, do not forget about that. But Jeff Wilson is someone we can look at at 5,100 if we're going really, really cheap below that. I think we're pretty good from there. Let's move over to the wide receivers, right? Wide receivers, I talked about the stacks. Love Cooper Cup, love Adams. Jamar Chase is a love as well going against the Dallas Cowboys who's who are struggling. We could just see a big burst from Jamar Chase in the first half, and they really um, slow things down with Joe Mixon in that running game. Debo Samuel, I just spoke about, he's going to get a lot of work, all right? He's going to get receptions. He's going to get rushing work. Uh, it just is what it is right now, especially with Elijah Mitchell out. We have to go there. Uh, Mike Evans, like I said, uh, I like him. And Michael Pittman is going to be highly questionable, all right? Definitely wait for that news. That is big, all right? So if he's out, then you can go to Ashton Doolin. But I also like Naeem Hines. And Ashton Doolin, who I just spoke about, he becomes that number one wide receiver because there's no Alec Pierce. No Alec Pierce. Possibly no Michael Pittman. Ashton Doolin becomes the number one wide receiver. He has upside, all right? This guy is sneaky. Um, a later round pick that they drafted, but he is he's, he's pretty nice, all right? So Ashton Doolin, watch out for him. All right, let's continue to go down these wide receivers. Uh, St. Brown, McLaurin, I already spoke about. Marquise Brown becomes the number one wide receiver. I really like the Sutton Judy, okay? Sutton and Judy... Uh, against Houston, I, Russell Wilson is going to bounce back in this game. I like them to turn things up. Uh, T. Higgins is questionable. If he is out, then we can go to Tyler Boyd. And obviously, I already like Jamar Chase. But Tyler Boyd gets a big bump um, if T. Higgins is out. All right. So we're going to see more targets, more yards, and more receptions from Tyler Boyd if T. Higgins is out. So definitely wait for that news on Sunday. All right. You definitely have to watch all these ins and outs it can be very very crucial to your lineups uh let's continue to go down dj moore is in a possible situation to back um bounce back from a poor performance in week one and this is his best quarterback he's had in his career so definitely have no problem going to dj moore um renfro i spoke about bateman i spoke about julio jones robinson those are our solid options if we're looking for cheap punt plays Elijah Moore is a guy we can look at at 5,000, all right? He's gonna he's getting all the snaps. 90%, 90% of the passing plays, he ran a route, all right? So he's on the field. Elijah Moore is on the field. He's a clear number one talent um, in the wide receiver core. Um, it's just a little bit of unluck un un against the Baltimore Ravens, really. But... The, the receptions and targets were there. I have no problem, even though Corey Davis got more receptions, more targets. Elijah Moore is the number one wide receiver for the Jets, so I have no problem um, having him as well. Other wide receivers, if we're looking down at this range, uh, I already spoke about Shark. I already spoke about Landry. Well, I want to wait on news for Kadarius Tony. okay? Kadarius Tony is a guy that is super cheap and can really really be a, a game-breaking wide receiver all right so for the giants there's no wandell robinson okay so that's going to be big so they have sterling shepherd and kenny galladay kenny galladay is totally washed we don't want kenny galladay it's basically shepherd 
And that's it. It's Shepard and Tony, pretty much. If Tony is cleared and will play in week two, he becomes someone we might need to, we have to put in our lineups. If he is cleared, they have no option not to play him. With Wanda Robinson out, he has to get snaps. Kadarius Tony has to get snaps. And every time he gets the ball, he is super, super explosive and is making guys miss. He's going to be one of my, our top punt plays at 4,200. All right. I gave you a gem right there. Watch the news and make sure that Tony is in the game. If Tony is in the game, then we're going to be smashing him at 4,200. Um, it's Sterling Shepard and Richie James. All right. We're, we're not playing Richie James. Okay. Other than that, we're going to move over to the tight end position. And I think I want to pay up at tight end yet again. If I was looking at a cheap option, I gave you Zach Ertz down there, down below. Um, other than that, other than that, Mark Andrews is in a solid position. We want to stay clear of George Kittle. Um, highly questionable. He got in a, a light workout on Friday, but we need more news for Sunday um, against the Seattle Seahawks. Waller is going to be a smash because of his matchup against Simmons. I have no problem going to him. Kyle Pitts is in a bounce back situation. Schultz can be a nice, safe play for the Dallas Cowboys. He's going to get a ton of targets from Cooper Rush because um, he's probably not going to have time to get that ball deep down the field. Schultz is going to be that short guy, that uh, safety net like he was for Dak Prescott. He's going to do the same thing for Cooper Rush. So I like him at 5,200. Um, I will throw Schultz in there because he's more of a safer play at tight end. Definitely has upside. Let's continue to go down um, at these cheaper guys. Um, Akui Boonham here is going to get a lot of work with no KJ Hamler. It's Sutton, it's Jerry Judy, and it's Albert O. He got six targets last week. I like him as a point play at 3,700. And if we're going super, super treat, um, cheap at tight end, we're going with Tyler Conklin. All right. Tyler Conklin was a nice play last week. Four receptions, seven targets, 16 yards, and a touchdown. We can see a very similar outcome this week because there's no C.J. Uzama. This is the Jets' number one tight end in Tyler Conklin. He's going to be a very, very sneaky punt play this week in week two, all right? So that is going to be the breakdown for week two DraftKings slate. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed all the information. I really tried to break things um, down for you. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll be back very, very soon with another video. All right. Peace out.